Jeannie Walbridge Blevins is a fifth generation Canadian and a founding member of the Walbridge Conservation Area Foundation. She is a writer who has extensively documented the story of her Walbridge family back to 1688. She's also published stories about the community of Mystic, her church, and her hometown of Point Claire, Quebec. Hello, I am Jeannie Walbridge Blevins, and this is my husband of 50 years, William Blevins. He will be showing the slides while I tell the Walbridge story. The year 2022 is the 200th anniversary of our Walbridge families coming to Quebec, Canada's Eastern Townships. Here is how it all happened. My sixth great grandfather, Henry Walbridge, was born in 1666 in Dorsetshire, England. As a young man, he emigrated to the American colonies. He settled in Connecticut and married there in 1688. His son, also Henry Walbridge, was born in Connecticut. And his grandson, also Henry, was born in Connecticut. By 1761, this third generation Henry moved his family north to Bennington in southern Vermont. We have been to Bennington, Vermont. In 1989, my dad, Stephen Walbridge, organized a See Your Roots expedition. 15 Walbridges of three generations drove there in a van. In the old first church, we sat in the Walbridge box pew. We photographed the gravestone of General Ebenezer Walbridge, who fought in the American Revolutionary War. Unfortunately, on what we Canadians consider at the wrong side. <laughs> Back to the third Henry. His son was Solomon, and Solomon moved his family in 1785 north to St. Albans, Vermont, just 14 miles south of the Lower Canada border. In 1822, his son, a second Solomon, moved with his wife and two daughters 10 miles north of the border to Lower Canada near Bedford, Quebec. The family settled on the present Walbridge property in Mystic, Quebec. They lived in a log cabin at first. Then Solomon built and operated a hotel tavern for about 20 years. Then he built a substantial house in 1843, which still exists and is inhabited by family today. The second Solomon's son, Alexander, was born in Quebec the first Walbridge born in Quebec. As an adult, my great grandpa Alexander enhanced and enlivened his community, which he named Mystic. He built an iron foundry and employed workers. He built a boarding house for their families. In the foundry, products were made, anything from frying pans, to iron stoves. He was an inventor and applied for and was granted many patents. He caused a railway station and a post office to be located in Mystic. He built a luxurious mansion called Lakelet Hall, decorated with furniture and paintings by local artisans and artists. He built a Methodist church now a United Church of Canada, with bricks from his kiln. In 1882, he designed and constructed a 12-sided red barn with a unique turntable device. The device was powered by a cable from a water wheel in a nearby brook. This enabled the horses to pull a wagon loaded with hay into the barn onto the central circular floor. The turntable device easily rotated to an empty loft. The hay was forked into the loft. 
Then the floor rotated 180 degrees so that the horses could pull the empty wagon frontwards out through the door from which they'd entered. No awkward backing up was necessary. Great Grandpa also built the second story on the schoolhouse for high school grades. That's a funny story. His seven children attended a white wooden one-room schoolhouse. His older daughters were approaching high school age, so Alexander requested that the school commissioners approve the building of a second story, provided with a high school teacher to teach students of that age. The school board would not approve. Hmm, too expensive. No problem, said Alexander. He would be glad to build the second story at his own expense. Hmm, still no approval. So he went back to his foundry, prepared the materials that he would need, and he waited. One day in 1882, there was a funeral of a prominent citizen in Bedford, three miles away. Everyone from Mystic went to Bedford to attend. Alexander brought his builders and materials from the foundry, and by the time the funeral was over, there was a second story on the schoolhouse. <laughs> Fête accompli. Here are the seven Walbridge children for whom great grandpa wished higher education. He was a determined character. So was his daughter, Mabel. That's Mabel on the right with the glasses. So far, I have not mentioned any Walbridge women by name. That is because ours is a patrilineal society. But my great aunt Mabel should be mentioned here. She was an early graduate of McGill University in Arts in 1897. That was only nine years after the first graduation class with women. Mabel wanted to study science, but women were only allowed into the arts faculty then. The Dean gave her permission to audit science lectures and labs and to write the exams for four years. She completed the requirements for a Bachelor of Science, but could only receive an arts degree. The director of Trafalgar School for Girls in Montreal contacted the Dean of Science to explain the school's need for a science teacher. He would have to be carefully selected, said the director as he would be teaching the daughters of Montreal's elite. The dean replied, have I got the perfect teacher for you, a qualified lady science teacher. Aunt Mabel taught at Trafalgar for eight years. Then she taught physics in a Chicago high school for years. And then she was a librarian at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, until she retired. Now back to Mabel's father, Alexander Walbridge. He had one son, my grandpa Alex, who was born in the Eastern Townships in 1883. He had a career on Montreal Island and retired to Mystic in 1939. His children were Francis, Edith, Stephen, and Dorothy. They spent their summers in Mystic Alex financed all of his children through higher education. On Grandpa Alex and Grandma Winnie's 50th wedding anniversary in 1959, they treated their son and daughters and spouses and five grandchildren to a four day boat trip up the Saguenay River on the SS Tadasac of the Canada Steamship Lines. What a blast! is definitely a highlight of my young life. I was one of the grandchildren. Grandpa Alex's son, my dad, Stephen Walbridge, was born in Mystic. After his RCAF service in World War II, that since 1950, our family lived in Point Claire on the western end of Montreal Island with my mum, Shirley, my brother, Jim, and myself. Dad commuted downtown to Montreal to his office work. We visited Mystic on most Saturdays. 
Jim and I played with our cousins. We jumped in the hayloft. We climbed the willow tree. We waded in the brook. We played tag along the top of the brick wall. We picked apples off the orchard trees in autumn and ate maple taffy on snow in the spring. Suburbanites, Jim and I, we learned how to milk a cow. My dad's youngest sister, Dorothy, also an RCAF veteran, and her husband, Harold Neer, farmed the Walbridge land during the 1950s and 1960s. There were dairy cows, pigs, chickens, geese, and three horses joined the menagerie in 1960s. Dorothy and Harold Neer had three children, Wendy, Bruce, and little Jim. Now Wendy and her children, Andrew and Donna, live in Mystic. Dad's older sister, Frances, on the top left, trained as a missionary for the United Church of Canada and spent 28 years in Angola and Zaire teaching African teachers how to teach their own children, thus expanding their literacy. Retiring to Mystic, she spent the next 35 years promoting literacy both in Angola and in the Eastern Townships in Quebec. Dad's other sister, Edith, that's the bottom left, became a phys ed teacher in Montreal and finished a 35 year career, retiring to Mystic for another 39 years. All three Walbridge sisters were a core of the Mystic community. Stephen's son, Jim Walbridge, and wife Judy had children, Scott, Cindy, Heather, and Eric. Here's a photograph of the four generations. From left to right is Scott, Grandpa Alex, my brother Jim holding baby Eric, and my dad Stephen on the right. Jim's four children now have 14 children, the seventh generation of Walbridges in Canada. In 1974, Grandpa and Dad were walking through our mystic property, and Grandpa said, I don't know what will become of this place. Dad thought about that. Then he had a great idea. All our relatives got together and formed the Walbridge Conservation Area to preserve the property's heritage. My dad, Steve, was president of the WCA for 30 years. I am the recording secretary, and my husband, William Blevins, is the treasurer. The 92-year-old historic barn was re-roofed with funds in inherited from Great Aunt Mabel. Over the following decades, our next generation was born and grew and added to our WCA membership. There were Jim's children, my children, and cousin Wendy Neer's children. All three generations enthusiastically carried out projects. We repointed the barn's foundation stones. We gathered black walnuts in autumn for reforestation groups. The nuts came from trees that great grandpa Alexander had planted. We chopped dead trees into firewood. We enjoyed July 1st family picnics at Mystic. Members of the conservation area planted three additional forests. We were a conservation area. We conserved. <laughs> After 30 years in 2004, the property was transformed into the charitable Walbridge Conservation Area Foundation. Interested mystic residents joined with us as WCAF members including Hardy Kraft, who became our president. This photo shows four generations of Walbridges plus WCAF members. There followed 18 more years of projects and improvements to protect, preserve and expand the historical and the ecological legacy for the village of Mystic. This included the complete interior renovation of the barn. Since 2010, 
the Walbridge 12 side barn has housed a museum display of the historic agricultural artifacts of the Missisquoi Historical Society. <laughs> 